Belfast outside the courts at an animal welfare protest. Um, it was organised by Northern Ireland Says No to Animal Cruelty and it went very well. Um, there was about eight or nine speakers, all a mixture of them and some local celebrities and people that have been very active in campaigning for animal rights and tougher sentences um, on animal abusers in Northern Ireland. Two years ago, our Justice League Union Center handed down that court behind you in a case of extreme animal cruelty, galvanized us, the people of Northern Ireland to take action and voice our disgust. The judge at that time said it was the worst case of animal cruelty they'd ever seen, but then they proceeded to hand out a six month suspended sentence to those very people that have caused so much unspeakable suffering to innocent animals. Saddened and angry, we gathered at City Hall to show that we would no longer tolerate the disregard shown to the suffering of animals by our law courts. That rally saw the start of our campaign. From that day on, 20,000 people have journeyed together, united over different causes and issues under the banner of Northern Ireland says no to animal cruelty to ensure that animals in our country have better protection. In those two years, we have seen progress and change. Maximum sentences for cases of animal cruelty in a magistrate's court increased. This is why we stand here today to once again make our voices heard and tell the judges that we will not accept the pathetically lenient sentences they hand out in cases of animal cruelty. We are here to ask our judges to do their job. No, in fact, we're not asking, we are demanding. Our animal friends, I stand before you with mixed feelings today. I'm obviously very honoured and privileged to be speaking to you. I'm also delighted to see the, the vast support that is out here on this crucial issue. But I'm also ashamed. I'm ashamed in this day and age that we need to have a rally of this nature. people in our society who are still inflicting pain and cruelty on animals and I'm ashamed that our judges are not responding to that cruelty. Like everybody, like everybody here, I am disgusted at animal cruelty. It is a, a mindset which is evil. There's no other way to describe it. We need all the love, care and expertise our amazing rescues provide. <laughs> I think I'm being heckled by a dog. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, the Lady Kennedy from the Great Group Given that I am a vet, I want to describe to you just what starvation does to an animal. We use that word so much, starvation and emaciation, but do we really know what it means? We've seen all the pictures, we've watched the videos, we've read the news and we've all been touched and torn apart by the cruelty we've witnessed. And one of the most heinous types of abuse that can be inflicted on a defenseless animal is to wantonly and willfully deprive them of their most basic needs. To deprive them of the same thing that all of us need to survive. To deprive them of food and of water. And as I've said before, let's get one thing straight. Starvation does not happen overnight. It doesn't even happen in a week. It takes time and a sick commitment. It's protracted and it's painful and it causes immense psychological and physical suffering. The stages of starvation don't vary between species. The process is exactly the same. To starve a human being, it's exactly the same thing as to starve a cow. To starve a dog, it's the same as starving a sheep. In the early stages of starvation, extreme hunger leads some animals to scavenge and eat almost anything in a desperate attempt to get rid of that pain of hunger. They will eat stones, cardboard, plastic, wood. All these kind of things can lead to blockages, intestinal tears, hemorrhaging, and diarrhea. And there are many ways to judge the greatness of a country, and one has to be how we treat our animals. And by and large, we do pretty well. 
Uh, but occasionally we are reminded that some people do very, very badly. Cody, that East Belfast ring, uh, high profile cases, but there are many, many more that go undetected. Steve McNew has been a great champion for animals in Stormont. And it's thanks to him and others that we're delighted to have new laws and new sentencing powers. We're back with our work to do. We raise our voices then. We're raising them today and we will make them listen. The problem is, even with the maximum sentence previously being two years, there's no magistrate as yet having that down. They've never seen any of the suffering cruel enough to have down that sentence. Why not? Is there something wrong with them? I'm here to represent the, the cat that lives with me, or that I live with, she's called Lollipop. And I asked her what she would say if she was here today. Funny enough, she said, <laughs> I would have brought her. I think Meow! in this case means judges want that. Are you all about? <laughs> and I think, uh, I suppose what touches me about animals is uh, more and more as I get older I learn there's a lot of knowledge in the world that doesn't come from the, the logical human brain. There's a lot of love that doesn't come from working things out. Most of the best things in life don't come from having status and money and jobs. I think that uh, animals... Uh, animals and small furry things, if you look at Facebook, as the person said, we send people to the moon and yet we use the internet for funny, funny videos about cats, but they are nice. <laughs> but animals, of course, they touch us because they represent that innocent, trusting, wholehearted, just wonderful part of what it is to be alive and when somebody is cruel to that part it really kills us because we feel it offends it offends life itself i think when somebody is so distant from their own heart that they can inflict suffering without even thinking about it it's taken me i'm 51 nearly 52 it's taken me probably 20 years of inner work to get to the point where I can say I am angry. I was brought up not to say I'm angry or not to be angry. And I used to think anger was a bad thing, you know, that it just led to destruction and cruelty. But obviously, we've heard all these speakers today. I take my hat off to all the animal organizations who use individuals who channel your anger into justice because nothing will change without a certain amount of anger. And anger that signposts you towards what is a better world we want to live in. 30 years ago, 32 years ago, my brother John McKeever, who's here somewhere today, among other people, he set up the Anti Blood Sports Society at Queen's University when we were students, and we formed the Animal Rights Movement in Northern Ireland. And uh, in that time, you know, the world was a different place in Northern Ireland, but there was a real appetite for looking at uh, animal rights and the whole idea of treating animals with respect. It's very sad that 32 years later, we have the flipping laws in place and we still have not got the sentences that reflect the human and the, the social attitude to animals that we see here today. Times have changed. No longer are the people that care about welfare and rights of animals the silent weird minority. We are very much the vocal majority and we will make our voices heard. We will not be silent and our message will not be silenced. Go. Oh, no, don't go. Fucking Brennan's family. <laughs> right, okay. Go. Thank <laughs> you. 